In the last section, we talked about how carbon and macromolecules are chemically important for life. But there is another molecule that is equally important and deserves its own video. And that molecule is water. Wherever we see water, we see life. And we know as humans, we need to constantly consume water to replenish the supply that is lost through routine functions like breathing and excretion. What makes water so special, which is similar to why carbon is so special, is its properties. Let's take some time to describe a few. First and foremost, water molecules are polar. This means that there is an unequal distribution of charges throughout the molecule, causing one side of the water molecule to be partially negative and the other side to be partially positive. The electrons shared between the bonds of the hydrogen and oxygen are pulled closer to the oxygen because it is more electronegative. And because the general shape of a water molecule is uneven, the pull of these electrons causes charges to form. This does not happen with evenly distributed bonds like we see in methane, where the pulls of electrons are evenly distributed and it does not create polar ends. An easy way to tell if a molecule is polar or not is to ask yourself, can I draw a straight line through this molecule and have all positive charges on one side and all negative charges on the other? If you can do that, the molecule, or at least that part of the molecule, should be polar. Illustrating that here, we can see that the line can be drawn through the water molecule to separate the charges. But there is nowhere I can accomplish that with the methane molecule, which means that it is nonpolar. Okay, back to water. This polarity is important because within the world of physics and chemistry, opposite charges are attracted to each other. So when multiple water molecules get together, the negatively charged side of the molecule with the oxygen is attracted to the positively charged hydrogen end of another molecule. This forms a weak but very relevant bond called a hydrogen bond. The hydrogen is important here as our hydrogen atom at this point is a positively charged proton. If this attraction takes place between this proton and another atom that is negatively charged, we can classify it as a hydrogen bond. Another important property of water is cohesion, which describes the ability of water molecules to attract and stick to other water molecules. As we can see in this image, this is mainly due to the polarity of each water molecule and the formation of hydrogen bonds. These negative and positive charges keep the water molecules together, making them more difficult to pull apart compared to molecules of some other liquids. Cohesion plays an important role in biological systems. Another similar important property of water is adhesion, which describes how water molecules can be attracted to and stick to other surfaces. Just like cohesion, adhesion can be explained by the structure of water molecules and their polarity and hydrogen bonds. Surfaces that are polar or possess charged molecules can attract water molecules, causing them to stick. Glass, for example, is made out of molecules that have charged ends. These negatively charged portions of the molecules attract the positively charged hydrogen ends of the water molecules. This attraction often makes the water stick to the glass, causing a meniscus to form within a graduated cylinder. This same adhesive property helps pull water molecules up the stem of a plant, which is referred to as capillary action. Adhesion, therefore, is a property that many plants cannot live without. In addition to cohesion and adhesion, the polarity and hydrogen bonds found between water molecules exhibit unique thermal properties. And when I say thermal here, I am referring to heat and the ability for water to change states of matter based on the amount of thermal, or heat, energy that is within the system. When looking at water specifically, we find that it does a good job of retaining heat, and compared to some other molecules, it takes a decent amount of energy to change the temperature enough to cause a state change. This is mainly due to the weak hydrogen bonds that exist between charges of different water molecules. These bonds keep the molecules glued together and collectively take a lot of work to break and change the water, let's say from a liquid to a gas. This means it has a higher melting and boiling point, especially when compared to other molecules that have weak interactions, like methane. 
This is important for the body because there are a large amount of reactions taking place within the solution inside of and between cells, and some of these reactions release heat. If water was not able to handle all of this energy, it could change states which could be very bad to have the water boiling inside of our body and our cells. But because of those hydrogen bonds and high boiling point, the water can handle all of the reactions just fine. In addition, we also can use water as a coolant for the body in the process of sweating. If our body gets too hot, we secrete a water solution to sit on the surface of our skin. We know that the hydrogen bonds between water molecules need to be broken to change it from a liquid to a gas, and this is accomplished from the heat radiating off the skin. It can break the bonds over time by transferring the heat to the water, which in turn has the heat energy leaving the skin and cooling the body down. The last main property that water has is the ability to dissolve particles within it in a liquid state. We call this the solvent property, as water is the main substance that charged particles can dissolve in. This works just like all other properties due to the fact that water is polar and has hydrogen bonds. Take a salt crystal, for example. When you shake some salt into a cup of water and swirl it around, you will notice that it disappears. This isn't a magic trick and the atoms that were in the salt cube are not actually gone, they were just separated by the water and spread out evenly into tiny pieces that you can no longer see with the naked eye. This works because the salt itself is made out of sodium and chlorine, and when these ionic bonds are broken apart, they separate into two charged ions. Sodium has a positive charge and chlorine has a negative charge. As per our charge pairing rule, the positively charged sodium ions will be attracted to the partial negative charge of the water molecule near the oxygen end. And the negatively charged chlorine atoms, properly called chloride, will be attracted to the partial positive charge of the hydrogen end of the water molecule. This makes the water the solvent and the sodium and chlorine the solute, the substance that is dissolved in the water. This separation of the salt crystal will continue to happen until each atom is separated, assuming there is enough water molecules to do the job. But this does not only happen with salt, it happens with many other ions within many different biological systems. It is for this reason we call water a universal solvent. Lastly, we can relate all of the information we have learned about water back to the idea of atoms and molecules being hydrophilic or hydrophobic. If something is hydrophilic, it means that it is attracted to water. And again, the reason for this is because it is an ion or a molecule that is polar. The attraction of these charges will drive either the negative or positive end of the molecule to the opposite charge within the water molecule. If a substance is hydrophobic, it means that it is not attracted to and actually repels water, not wanting to mix with it. This happens when there is no polarity or charge present for the charged ends of the water molecule to be attracted to. We talked about this earlier with phospholipids, which are structures that make up the cell membrane. The head of the phospholipid has a variable group that is polar, meaning the water molecules will be attracted to it, and the tails of the phospholipid are nonpolar. For this reason, the tails of multiple phospholipids will end up sitting next to other tails, all because water will be more attracted to the polar head and not mix well with the nonpolar tails. But the cell membrane is not the only place we see this happen. If we take a look at the content within human blood, we see some interesting interactions or lack of interactions between the molecules found within the bloodstream. Blood plasma is the liquid part of blood excluding the red blood cells and one of the primary components of blood plasma is water. Your blood is used as a highway for your body to move many different nutrients, but how this happens solely depends on the nutrient and whether it is hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Hydrophilic components like salt, glucose, oxygen, and ionized amino acids can easily move on their own directly through the plasma because they play nice with water based on their polarity. Other hydrophobic molecules like fats and cholesterol are not soluble in water, just like those phospholipid tails we talked about, and need to form larger complexes with hydrophilic components to move through the blood plasma. We'll touch on this a bit more later.